Today, we're gonna start messing with our standing rigging. We're gonna replace all the all the stays, all the turnbuckles, all the pins, all the um, cotter pins. And most importantly, we're gonna be messing with our pre-bend on our mast. Cause right now, the mast, the top of it bends back way too far. And we are completely out of adjustment on our, on our furler. Like we cannot suck the head stay in anymore. We're gonna shorten the head stay today. We're gonna lengthen the back stay. Hopefully get our pre-bend not so dramatic. And hopefully we don't screw this thing up. <laughs> we have stay locks and a running length of cable. Um, yeah, so up the mast we go. We are on the water when we're doing this. Um, we're gonna do one stay at a time. We are going to support our mast with our halyards, take one off at a time, put the stay locks on, put the mast back, or put the stay back up, or the shroud, whatever we decided first, and it should be pretty good. To fix our pre-band is we have loosened off our back stay pretty much as far as it'll go. And we've taken a halyard from the jib and sucked it in tight as we can to move the mast head back forward a little bit. And we're pretty happy with how it looks right now. So I think we're gonna go with those measurements. We're gonna do the back stay first because it has to go longer. And then we'll take a tape measure up there and measure the four stay. Wait, wait, wait. What is pre-bend and why does it matter to us? Let me draw Haraya. Isn't she beautiful? We have a keel step mass, meaning it runs through the boat all the way to the keel. That makes sense, right? Our problem is, our forestay is way too long, causing it to sag. This makes it difficult to furl in our jib. It also causes the masthead to bend back too far under the pressure of the backstay, causing problem number two, which is the luff of our mainsail doesn't match the curve of the mast. This causes wrinkles from the clue, which makes the sail shape less efficient. So by shortening the forestay and lengthening the backstay, we solve both of these problems. Okay, fold this side. Okay, stop. It's coming through. So I've marked the new position of our backstay. The top tape was the old position, the original. The bottom tape is the new, and it looks to be about inch and a half per side, which is three inches, which is about the length, how much we're gonna lengthen this cable. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna loosen the backstay, take it off its chain plate, hook our halyard into our chain plate, tension it back up so the mast is solid. If Jessica's gonna lift me up the mast, I'll undo the top pin of this backstay. How's it going, Captain? <laughs> it's a good way to start a Saturday morning. <laughs> Is it gonna go boing when it comes out? It's finally getting loose. I, I can see that. I've only got like four threads left though. Keep your face out of the way in case it goes boing. <laughs> we may have to loosen off our, um, our jib sheet. <laughs> I mean our jib halyard a little bit because I don't know if I can pull this clevis pin out or not the way it is. Um, I think we're pulling too far forward right now and I'm out of adjustment on the turnbuckle. I might have done it. <laughs> you are so weird. <laughs> I don't see anything weird about boing. <laughs> I'm grateful it didn't go like that because that would have been bad. So <laughs> we're safe. I think Jessica's a little over paranoid about the mast falling down. It's a keel step mast. It's pretty solid mast. 
it's got plenty of stays on it, it's not gonna fall down. I'm not even concerned. We're gonna tighten up this main halyard here that I clipped into the chain plate, get some tension back on this rig so I can go up the mast. We have the main line she's gonna pull me up with. We also have a safety line attached as well. Um, in case, worst case, something breaks. Uh, the mass is supported. Let's get this done. Up we go. So we got the first stay down and we just laid it out here. Sam's still way up in the air. Just lowered it down with an extra line. Yeah. Laid it out right here on the dock. Right, that went well. Got the back stay off. Got the new spinnaker line ran, same time. Wasn't too uncomfortable. <laughs> Definitely a cruiser. <laughs> hey, I have underwear on, what more do you want? I'll go over here. Stop staring. It's not nice. <laughs> yeah, you gotta get me out of your crotch. <laughs> I can maybe go over here. Yeah. What's that called? A flower? Sure. Step one, I already forgot. Put the fitting on first. Now I gotta tighten all this back up. <laughs> Not supposed to look like that. But lucky for us, it goes back together pretty easily. Just pay attention to your lines. <laughs> Brand new. So we're no experts, so don't take this as a how-to. This is just kind of more of a how we did. Um, we did watch a few YouTube videos though, um, from Staylock. <laughs> Basically, you unravel the outer core, the outer layers, and expose the core. Don't forget to put the fitting on first. Not a big deal if you don't. So I've made a mess, so I'm gonna clean it up real quick by just doing this. There we go. The last one didn't take this long. The trial run. <laughs> that is true. We've actually already done two of our cables already. So we've installed four of these state locks already. And why is it now that we decided to film it that I'm struggling? <laughs> I'm on the struggle bus. Stage fright. Seriously. Come wow. on, you can get it. Doesn't want to like separate pretty. Use your fingers right. I'm trying. It goes like that. I just want to go like that and see this is tangled. Funny. Yeah, I don't think you're getting any endorsements from Staylock. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, really, they can't make it any easier to do it yourself. If you really are particular, you can get this nice looking flower looking thing. All the wires are in perfect order. Um, it's not important at this stage, so I'm moving on. This one right here, there's one wire not cooperating for me. This one is twisted underneath something here. There we go, okay. There, ah! Oh. See how pretty? That's what it's supposed uh, to do. That's what like. it's supposed to do. Steelock also recommends this little cone. The wire sticks like an eighth inch out. And the only other thing we gotta worry about is there's a there's a slit in the cone, and you just gotta make sure a wire doesn't jam in there as you're tightening this compression fitting. See how that wire is jammed in that split? I gotta get that out of there. 
And then you wanna just even them all up so they look pretty. So I've got my eighth inch of the wire sticking out of the cone. The strands on the wire rope is pretty even. There's a little forming cone in there. Just make sure it's in there. Um, they don't, I don't, they, it doesn't really come out. stopped after watch the stay like video they said just it'll like stop like there's no um, torque wrench you put on or anything you just tighten it up and it kind of just stops and you pretty much know it stopped all right let's tear this apart see how we did what do you think I think that looks pretty good the wire, the core is sticking out an eighth inch. The outer strands have bent over really nice. Everything looks pretty even. Nothing's in that um, slit in the little compression cone. So now we're just gonna put some um, thread lock on it to keep it from galling up. Galling up, and that's about it. I think we're done. Pretty simple. So we've tightened the turnbuckle back up to our, our tape line so we have our right length. We're just gonna put a chisel or a screwdriver through this hole and the pin on the other side, like so. And we'll walk down to the other end and we'll just pull it tight with our other turnbuckle where we want it, mark it, cut it. <laughs> I've been told that the new um, cable will stretch a little bit. So I opened up my turnbuckles um, so that I had plenty of adjustment to tighten these things up later. And when I undid the, opened up the fitting on the stay lock, it looked like the end of the wire goes to about right there. And so that's where I kind of mark to. Got the back stay on at the top. I'm gonna have Jessica lower me back down. It's a pleasant day. That little fishing boat just came in and now I'm rocking and rolling up here. Doesn't take much of a wake down there to get me moving. I think it's also a pretty good idea to climb your mast every now and then. Check things out. So as I'm coming up and down here four or five times, I'm just checking everything I can think of, all the cotter pins, seeing if there's any cracks, making sure everything's pulling straight. Um, you know, just pretty basic stuff. We did find one bad cotter pin. Um, I went and pulled out and it basically disintegrated in my hand, so I was pretty glad we caught that. Uh, we thought the rig was good. Obviously, it wasn't 100% good. One little cotter pin, whole mass could have fallen to the ground. Apparently, I'm gonna do something with that light on one of my trips up as well. The next step was to replace the forestay. In order to do that, I had to disassemble our furler. I have never taken one apart before, and to be honest, I was nervous in putting it off as long as possible. After watching a few videos online, and with the owner's manual in hand, I cautiously began to disassemble it. It's a little wok washer okay. right there. Oh, I need to get that out. I'm gonna need a screwdriver or something. Just do it like the YouTube videos. You just rip it out and put the new one in. I'm not ready to fully commit to that. There's no way. 
I'm not doing that. No? <laughs> We're gonna climb together. The old cable needs to be pulled out of the foils and the new one fed back into it. So I'm removing the outer wires of the new cable and the inner core of the old one, basically creating a Chinese finger trap. Easy. Gotta have a button. That was easy. <laughs> wow. Well, I guess you could have pulled. It's like a, it's like a Chinese finger trap. <laughs> yeah. I mean, technically, you could just cut it off, right? Because you don't have any more stuff. Yeah. So that technique, you lost, what, six inches? That's what they tell me. Uh, seems like more than that. All we got left to do are the two cap shrouds. Um, that's probably three trips up and down the mast. We've got it supported by our running backstay. And we also have this halyard off of our spinnaker line. Um, ran back to a winch and a cleated off. We've loosened the other side just a little bit so there's not a lot of tension on this. And I hopefully the mast is pretty stable. I guess as I go up, I'm gonna know if it gets too wiggly. I'll come back down and we'll reassess. The goal is not to hear a kerplunk. <laughs> she's so paranoid about the mass falling down. I'm I think she's more worried about that than me falling. I'm worried about you going kerplunk too. That's nasty water. <laughs> oh, so she's not worried about me getting injured. She's worried about me growing a third nipple from all the toxic water at this marina. <laughs> I mean, I'm any okay marina. with the third nipple. It's not this one, it's any marina. We hope you enjoyed this episode. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss any of the adventures. A very special thanks to our patrons who help keep the creative juices flowing. See you next time.